Now continuing our charge disk with the annulus, in part A we determined the total electric charge, in part B we determined the electric field as a function of x along the x-axis. In part C, show that at points on the x-axis that are sufficiently close to the origin, the magnitude of the electric field is approximately proportional to the distance between the center of the annulus and the point and how close is sufficiently close. And part D, a point particle with mass m and negative charge minus q is free to move along the x-axis but cannot move off the axis. The particle is originally placed at rest at x equals 0.01 r1 and released. Find the frequency of oscillation of the particle. Okay, so we're very close here and then we put a minus q and this minus q feels an attractive force. So it's going to perform simple harmonic motion about the center point. Okay, so in part C, Uh, let's rewrite the electric field EX. This is basically sigma X divided by 2 epsilon 0. We have X square plus R1 square to the power minus 1 over 2 minus x square plus r2 square to the power minus 1 over 2 and if we take this into 1 over x parentheses sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0 multiplied by 1 over x then we have uh, 1 plus R1 divided by x parentheses squared to the power minus 1 half minus 1 plus R2 divided by x to the power 2 to minus 1 half. Okay, so what we have done here is take this into x square parentheses. x squared to power minus 1 half is 1 over x. So this came out and we have r1 square over x square and r2 square over x square inside the parentheses to the power minus 1 over 2. Now, if x is small for x much, much less than r1 and for x much, much less than r2, we have x much, much less than r1, since r1 is less than r2. It's the radius of the annulus. Remember, r1 is less than r2, so x is much less than r2 means, r1 means, it is much less than, uh, r2 means, it's much less than r1. So, uh, the, these two conditions, basically, x much less than, uh, R2 and R1 at the same time means X is much less than R1. So if X is much less than R1, it's already much less than R2. That's basically what we're saying. Okay, <clears throat> so the 1 plus R1 over X squared to the power minus 1 over 2 becomes approximately, uh, now if x is much less than r1, r1 over x will dominate, so it's going to become r1 over x squared to the power minus 1 over 2, so we can neglect the 1, and this is going to be equal to x divided by r1. And similarly, if I do the same exercise for uh, 1 plus r2 over x parentheses squared to the power minus 1 over 2, this is going to be x divided by 
R2 with this assumption. So what happens to the electric field? The electric field becomes sigma over 2 epsilon 0 because this uh, 1 over x cancels this x and we have x divided by r1 minus x divided by r2 so you can see that the electric field is directly proportional to x it is sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 so <clears throat> we find that sufficiently close means x should be much less than r1 because if it's much less than r1 it's already much less than r2 so we do find that it is linearly proportional to the distance with respect to the origin now when we put a negatively charged particle at the uh, annulus uh, it's going to feel a force electrical force if it's at 0.01 r1 it's right above this it's going to feel an attractive force towards the center towards the origin so it's going to be minus q times the electric field uh, the force it feels it has uh, it's a point particle with negligible weight we're assuming and uh, or the force is much greater than its weight then the net force on the x-axis is going to be uh, minus sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 the electric field is minus sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 so uh, it's it has a, a charge minus Q, so Q multiplied by the electric field is basically uh, this. So it's multiplied by Q, that's the force. That's equal to M X double dot. Now you can see that X double dot is equal to minus omega square X is the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillator and omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So we recognize this form here. Therefore, uh, we can say that omega square is uh, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 q times m 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Therefore, the frequency of the oscillations will be, um, this is basically equal to 4 pi f square. So I have to uh, divide it by um, 4 pi. So it's going to be a 4 pi square f square. So it's 2 pi f. So when you take the uh, square root you get 1 over 2 pi <clears throat> uh, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 qm 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 and this should be inside the square root so we find that the frequency of the oscillations will be 1 over 2 pi squared sigma over 2 epsilon 0 qm 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Okay, so uh, in this exercise, we have basically taken our answer from part B 
and looked at the limit when x is much less than r1 and r2. We see that uh, the terms here, 1 over square root x squared plus r1 squared, can be written as uh, x squared plus r1 squared to the power minus 1 half. In x squared parentheses, it's it comes out as x to minus 1, 1 over x, 1 plus r1 squared over x squared. When x is much less than r1, this term dominates over 1. So r1 over x squared to the power minus 1 half is x over r1. And the same thing is true for the second term, x over r2. We see that the electric field is proportional to x and sufficiently close means x is much less than r1. And multiplying the electric field with the charge q, we find the electrical force. It is minus sigma x over 2 epsilon 0, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 multiplied by q. It is minus because it's in minus i hat direction. Uh, you can see here it is in minus i hat direction. If the charge is here, it's minus q, it's going to feel attraction. So the force will be in minus i hat direction. And uh, this is equal to mx double dot. x double dot equals minus omega square x is the equation of motion for, for simple harmonic motion where the angular frequency is related to frequency as 2 pi f. So omega square is 4 pi square f square. Uh, which is recognized as sigma x over 2 epsilon 0. Uh, it's going to be, um, so sorry about this, q has to be here, sigma q, not at the bottom. Sigma q, 2 epsilon 0 m. All right, so also here it should be sigma q, over 2 epsilon 0 m. <clears throat> All right, so this is sigma xq divided by 2 epsilon 0. So sigma q over 2 epsilon 0 m, uh, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2 is x double dot. Um, so this term is recognized as omega square. And uh, therefore, we have f here 1 over 2 pi squared sigma q over 2 epsilon 0 m, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2.